tonight. Our special transmission as Israel carries the fifth attack on a school turned shelter in the past eight days. Assalamu alaikum and good evening. This is Muslim News Canada on Muslim Network TV. I'm Zahra Sayyid. Today is the 283rd day since the onset of Israel's war. It has been a devastating weekend in Gaza. Israeli airstrikes have killed 170 Palestinians since Saturday. More than 500 civilians have been injured. This past Saturday, air raids on the Al Mawasi camp killed 90 Palestinians. Critics are calling the attack the deadliest since the start of the war. Israeli forces have also bombed the Maghazi and Burij refugee camps. Apache helicopters, gunships attacked the Az Zahra area in central Gaza. Casualties piled up, including those of children. Israeli Defense Minister Yov Gallant commends the pilots involved in the airstrike. He says these attacks are weakening Hamas. Israel has targeted another United Nations-run school at the Nusayrat refugee camp. The attack has killed 17 Palestinians. This is the fifth attack on the school-turned-shelter in the last eight days. Multiple reports say Israeli artillery has been striking multiple districts of Gaza City. There is heavy helicopter presence around Khan Yunus. Israeli Finance Minister Bezalel Smotrich strongly opposes releasing Palestinian prisoners as part of a potential ceasefire deal. The death toll from Israel's war is alarming. At the time of writing, at least 38,584 Palestinians have been killed. A revised report by the United Nations estimates another 10,000 civilians are buried under the rubble. 88,881 Palestinians are injured. Israel's death toll from Hamas's attacks stands at 1,139. Israel is accused of genocide at the International Court of Justice. The court has ordered that Israel immediately halt its military operations in Rafah. The Gaza Health Ministry reports an Israeli airstrike has hit the designated humanitarian zone in the El Mawasi camp on Saturday. The airstrike has killed 90 Palestinians. The Israeli military says the strike aimed to eliminate Hamas members. It calls the site an operational compound run by Hamas. Israel says the attack has killed Mohammed Deif, one of the founders of Hamas's military wing, the Qasim Brigades, and a survivor of multiple assassination attempts. The strike has also targeted Rafa Salama, commander of the Khan Yunus Brigade. Deif and Salama are key figures behind the October 7th attacks. Israel claims the strikes have killed Salama. Hamas denies having any presence in the camp. The militant group calls the claims a pretext for the attack. It remains unclear if the attack has killed Deif and Salama. Egyptian President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi has cautioned against using Gaza's Rafah border to intensify the blockade on the besieged enclave. Sisi made the comments at a Cairo press conference with Serbian President Alexander Vujic. Sisi says Egypt wants an immediate ceasefire and staunchly opposes any displacement or undermining of the Palestinian cause. He condemns Israeli actions targeting civilians in Gaza and the West Bank. Israel's recent control of Rafah's crossing has worsened the humanitarian crisis in Gaza. It is impeding aid and medical transfers in the besieged enclave. The University of Windsor has reached an agreement to peacefully end a free Palestinian sit-in that began in mid-May. The agreement commits to responsible investment practices and annual disclosures of public fund investments. Institutional partnerships with Israeli universities will be boycotted until Palestinian self-determination is achieved. The university will implement anti-racism training and establish an anti-oppression website within 30 days. Participants in the sit-in will face no academic or employment repercussions. Negotiations have been underway between the university administration and the student groups for four weeks. Protesters describe the outcome as Canada's most comprehensive sit-in agreement. They say the agreement addresses divestment, academic boycotts, and anti-Palestinian racism. Delta Airlines is facing backlash for linking staff wearing Palestinian badges to Hamas. Controversy erupted when images of flight attendants donning Palestinian badges surfaced during a Boston to West Palm Beach flight. The group Stop Anti-Semitism posted photos on social media prompting Delta to respond. 
The airline expressed concern about the badges and said an investigation was underway. Critics say Delta's response seems to validate the mistaken association. The response has led to calls for a boycott. The Council on American Islamic Relations condemns Delta's response as racist. The Council is demanding an apology. Delta later retracted its statement. The airline removed the controversial post. This incident adds to Delta's history of controversies involving Muslim passengers. In 2020, the airline was fined $50,000 by the United States Transport Department for ordering Muslim passengers off plane despite security clearance. In July 2016, a Muslim couple was removed by the airline after a passenger complained that their behavior made her uncomfortable. The Quebec Human Rights Commission is demanding a $13,000 settlement from a karate club in Quebec. The news comes after an instructor at Montreal's Karate Auto Defense Lamar asked a 12-year-old girl to remove her hijab to participate in the class. The instructor cited uniform policies. Karate Canada, the national association, permits head coverings. When the girl did not remove her hijab, the instructor expelled her from the class. The Canadian Council of Muslim Women says such incidents can cause distress amongst children. The commission continues to seek justice for the young girl. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau condemns the assassination attempt of former U.S. President Donald Trump. Trudeau spoke with Trump, offering his well wishes. Trudeau's office has not disclosed Trump's response. Public Safety Minister Dominic LeBlanc has assured increased vigilance by Canadian security officials following the incident. He also offered support to the U.S. Homeland Security. The incident has drawn global condemnation. The serial killer Jeremy Skibicki has been sentenced to life in prison for first-degree murders of Indigenous women in Winnipeg, Manitoba. Skibicki has killed Rebecca Cantois, Morgan Harris, Mercedes Myron, and other unidentified Indigenous women. Skibicki admitted to the killings before trial. His lawyer argued he was not criminally responsible due to schizophrenia. Prosecutors countered that his actions were racially motivated, targeting vulnerable women. Justice Glenn Joyle has dismissed claims of mental incapacity. Families of the murdered women say they are relieved by the verdict. They say, however, they await closure through forthcoming sentencing. Thank you for watching. Our news is produced by Muslim Network TV, which is a not-for-profit organization. We need your support for donations. Please scan the QR code on our broadcast or visit muslimnetwork.tv to donate now so we can continue to amplify the voices of Muslims in Canada and abroad. Assalamu alaikum.